Well, hello. Um, this is um, a live demo. <laughs> I've just been having a quick bowl of uh, soup, which was delightful before I start this demo. So a um, couple of minutes behind time. I'm going to turn the camera around. So do bear with me. Um, it's saying to me something now. What's it saying? Share this video to be... I don't know what that means. Never mind. Uh, well, <clears throat> anyway, so I'm going to turn the, the camera around and um, start, start start doing the demonstration. So here we go, let's uh, turn it around. Bear with me while I just move the camera. Phone actually, but never mind. So it will be a bit skew with for a moment. So do bear with. And uh, hopefully I haven't turned the volume down. Let's hope that's going to be okay. It looks like the clouds have gone in. The clouds have gone in, like the sun's gone in. <laughs> anyway, hopefully you can see that. Right. OK, I'm going to put my glasses on so hopefully I can uh, say hello. Hello, Sandra, you're with me. Right. OK, um, I may not respond. I think art and nature are the two things in my book that help me to try and sort of stay on an even keel. And I think um, art. Well, it, I was just told that the Internet was no good, so I do hope you can see me and hear me. Otherwise, I'm going to be talking to myself. And that just uh, um, is a not a good thing. It's also popped up on my screen. Share this video with B1 Global Community. No. So I don't know who they are, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> OK, hopefully I'm back and hopefully you can hear me and see what's um, what I'm going to be doing. So let's just uh, so as I was saying, it's it's um, world. Um, mental health day and I just think that's really important to um, actually you know honour it and, and do something about it in any way I can so um, that's why I'm offering this free um, demonstration of the joy I have with painting and paints so let me just talk you through what I've got so this is a small piece of compressed charcoal I may or may not use it but I just want to let you know I've also got the tiniest bit of a wax crayon. Look, I'm already dirty. <laughs> the tiniest bit of a wax crayon um, resist, create resist. I don't think I'll put that onto white paper. What I'll probably do is put that onto um, a, a coloured area or an area that's got paint on it, but we'll see. Um, just a word of warning, by the way, I will probably have to use my hairdryer in order to work this painting you know, to its fruition. Um, so... You'll have to talk amongst yourselves, tell jokes and all that sort of thing when the time time comes to it. Right, uh, you can probably see this bit of paper. So I've tested the colours. Now what I've done is um, I've chosen these colours for particular reasons, which I'll just come to in just a second. But if I show you what I've done, um, I've drawn, and I don't often do much in the line of pencil marks generally. I usually paint marks in toward the end of the painting. But I thought for, the, for ease of you seeing what I'm doing and my sort of think, thought process, my thinking process, well that'll do, <laughs> then hopefully um, this will help. So I've just used this pencil, this is uh, Saunders Waterford paper on, it's my last sheet on a, on a stretched or gummed pad, it's great because you don't need to worry about uh, stretching the paper, and I've, I've long realised I love drawn marks within my work, or marks basically, so hello everybody who's here and hello, 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 there's quite a few, oh, lovely, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, Saturday afternoon and you know, it's just all kind of work together. So, and I hold my pencil very similar to how I hold my brush when I'm just creating these sort of marks and, you know, um, just to, it's, I want uneven marks. I don't want anything ever to look neat and tidy unless I'm particularly doing something that's neat and tidy, but <laughs> you get what I mean. <laughs> anyway, so I get back to these colors. I chose these three colors, particularly because they, um, well, those two granulate. This is uh, graphite, which is just gorgeous. And one, this is an absolute favourite of mine. This is cobalt violet. Winsor & Newton particularly is a, a really good make for this. It, and I, I don't know if you can see this, how it's granulated. And I've allowed the green gold, which is a Daniel Smith one, to blend into it to see how those colours work. Well, you can see by just those three colours that I can create a really lovely dark... Um, this is obviously the um, uh, the graphite and the cobalt violet mixed together, and then I've allowed the green to go into the the um, 
graphite here. I keep wanting to say sepia. That's only because I've got sepia ink, which I may use presently, but we'll see. We'll see how things go. So just to keep the, the painting fairly straightforward and simple, theme-wise, colour-wise, that I wanted to just work with these three and the fact that they granulate and make the most amazing effect. The other thing I hope you can see, I have taken a photograph and I'll pop it into the, um, when I share the video later at the end, um, these marks, I don't think you can see those marks here, this is with something, I think I've talked to you about this before, um, somebody tells me it's called scrim, I have no idea, I really need to find out so it's no good using something when I can't tell you what it is, but it's it feels like horse hair or something that you would stuff a cushion with, but it's really, you know, really hard, um, but there we are, so this, this will create some texture uh, when I get further on into the painting. So, right, without further ado, all this information will be posted, as I say, at the end of the video, so should you want to have a go or just use the colours, um, you'll be able to do so. So, I hope you can see this. As I say, this painting is uh, bigger than my, my lens of my phone that I'm using the three colours. And what I've done is I've got green gold in my radial palette already, so I'll be using that, and I've put some of the cobalt violet on the side there because it's not actually in my palette at the moment. And the same with the um, the, the graphite colour, which is graphite grey. That's a fabulous colour, by the way. You'll all have to go spending again, won't you? That's the trouble. You see things, oh gosh, that's really lovely. Right, so let's get on with it. <clears throat> the uh, a nice soft hake is going to come into play, and I'm going to dampen the paper all over. Um, what I'll do is, if you can't see to the edges uh, of the entire painting, what I'll do is I'll post a photograph of the finished piece at the end. Um, I'm also going to put, <laughs> this is me being really bold now, look. I'm also going to put this painting up for um, the artist support pledge at the end. Um, so if you put, were to pop over to Instagram later on, uh, onto my page, you'd find it, and it would be at a, a you know, lovely price, nice price, because I think, again, I want to share the love a bit. You know, it's all about looking after each other, isn't it, really, in this world? Okay, so I've particularly chosen to use these colours only, so it's interesting to think, well, what are you going to do with your sky? So I'm going to go with some of this graphite. I'm using a big, soft... Um, size 14 sable round and I'm going to pick up some of this graphite and start going into the the sky and immediately then pick up a little bit of the cobalt violet start moving that into there I'm not going to get any green <laughs> that would be too wacky wouldn't it I'm going to clean my brush I'm using just water. Well, what else would I use with watercolours? And oh, she's lost it. <laughs> Hope you can see that. So already I've got a nice, um, interesting sky going on. I'm going to come down with this graphite now. I, what I do is I tip the edge of my brush into the um, paint that's come straight from a tube and then take it into there where I can get it a little bit softer. And I want to just create some very bold marks coming down here. It's almost looking like a snow scene, isn't it? I quite like that. Uh, I'm also aware that I, as a landscape artist, I do horizontal lines all the time. So every now and again, you might see me just do something like this because I'm trying to remind myself to be a bit more um, adventurous, shall we say, with my um, mark making. See that? And, and I'm ro rolling now. Rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> that rawhide or something. She's lost it. There's no hope. No hope, folks. Right, just cleaning my brush. Look at this. Already I've got black water. Cleaning it out on the side. And I always have a towel. You can probably see this is a towel underneath um, so that I can literally dab my brush off onto the edge on the on the towel. Okay, just moving some of those marks around a little bit. Although I rather like some of those. They're fascinating, aren't they? Oh, just don't go and buy graphite. It's just wonderful. And I'm going to put a little bit more up there. I think I should rename myself, not Louise Bogard, it's a Louise Ross, as in Bob Ross, you know. <laughs> it's your world. I'm just cleaning around the edges. I think I've told you before I use sellotape um, to, to seal the edges of my paintings, not masking tape. And, and purely because I love the fact that I can clean the edges 
and if you don't clean the edges it really does um, mess with your interpretation of what you're achieving. Sounds like I'm using big words. Right, I'm going to now use some of the cobalt violet and I've got a, a long rigger and I'm going to work into that with quite thick paint. I expect you can see that. I know I'm showing my age. I saw that. I heard that, Sue. <laughs> Definitely show my age. <laughs> that and the fact that hubby's always singing it for whatever reason. I don't know. And can you see how I'm, I'm sort of wiggling my brush? I'm not, um, I haven't said that. I'm now going to do a, a straight sort of mark along here because I do want that to have a suggestion of the distance. So I'm mixing some of the sepia with the cobalt tucker is like to have a bit of a line over here this is this is the distance a distant hill completely imaginary but when you spend a lot of time in the in the um, landscape I think you've it's kind of in you you know you can just easily replicate it or make it up as you go along <laughs> the face maybe right, there we go that's more like it do you see how that's blooming there can you see that bit let me bring that up to you this bit here I love that see a lot of people would consider that area to be a mistake and, and blot it out but I as, as far as I'm concerned that adds interest and it's also creating the sense that maybe there's some trees in the distance so these colors are working quite well is everything going all right can you all see and can you hear somebody send me a thumbs up just to make sure that um, I'm still on your radar right into the distance I'm going to have to introduce a little bit of, thank you, good, good, good. I'm going to have to introduce the tiniest little bit of the green gold. Otherwise, that colour is just going to jump out when I come to the foreground and suddenly introduce it. So it's going in. Can you see that? That's just adding the slightest hint of warmth, actually, because it's a very, it is a warm green. It's quite yellow. Can you see that? Yeah, it's um, super, super colour. Um, and I do prefer Daniel Smith's green gold to um, Windsor and Newton's. Windsor and Newton's lovely but my personal preference would be the um, Daniel Smith one. The Windsor and Newton one's a little bit more sort of like oak tree sort of colour. I'm allowing the pigments to mix on the paper so I'm just literally dotting the pigment around here and there. See and in my head these are stones. What well, it is it's a stone wall. It's a stone wall it's leading up into the Dartmoor, into the Dartmoor, into Dartmoor. <laughs> and up here, I'm going to, I've just got a clean, um, soft sable that I'm going to pull out some of that pigment just so that it does look like it's, that path is meandering a bit further up there. It's possibly a bit wet yet to do that, but now we keep that going. And also clean that edge again. There we are. Now into here, I'm going to add some of the cobalt violet to allow, as I say, those pigments to, to mix on the paper. And I'm literally just touching the paper and allowing the pigment to then move around. I would love to flick, but it's too early to flick. I rather like spattering, you know, <laughs> making a mess. Right, I'm going to come down to the bottom now and I want to add a really stronger colour. So what I'm going to do is have, I'm going to go in initially with the green gold. I'm going to be quite generous. Then I will add the other colours to it. So I'm tipping the, the support just a little bit and I'm going to, actually it's really dry quickly. It's not that warm in here today. I'm just going to wet this area a little bit. Get a bit more movement going. If you wet away from where you've already painted and then just tickle the edge, the paint that you're trying to get to move around will, will start moving. If you haven't um, wetted behind it as such, it's got nowhere to go. So let that pigment just release. It's going to have some fun and wander around all on its own. And already, with the way I'm using my brush, I'm already thinking of texture. I'm going to come in here a little bit with a few marks. This, um, this green gold works brilliantly because it just, whatever minerals they put in this paint, um, it just, it's like a bully. It just pushes all the other colours out. Can you see this? It's, uh, it's amazing. I love the way it works. 
I hope you're all sitting comfortably and got a cup of tea and listening to me whittering on here. <laughs> right, cleaning this area up. It also gives you thinking time when you're just cleaning. You're just thinking, right, where to go next? You're assessing. Is that really wet? Should I go in yet or should I leave it? Um, now I'm going to put some of the graphite into here. These colours are all very powerful. So, you, you know, here comes a bit of a, a warning. So, again, it's, can you see if I move it like that? Can you see if it's shiny? As long as the paint is, um, surface is very shiny, it's viable and you can, you can move the pigments around. Gosh, that's strong, isn't it? Cool. Look at that. Oh, it's so exciting. Hmm. I nearly went in there. I will do, actually, but I'm going to go with... I've picked up some really thick paint. I'm just going to go into these areas where I've got the drawn marks. I'll have to reinstate some of those drawn marks. I'll pick up another brush, otherwise I'll lose all of that graphite that I've just um, collected. So I'm now picking up some of the cobalt violet. And so we're mixing on the paper and allowing those colours to just do their thing. And in a minute, I'm going to either add, well, I might add both. I'm going to add some of the that funny scrim, whatever it is. But I'm also going to add, possibly, I'm thinking about it, <laughs> some granulation medium. Um, sometimes you feel I feel you can go too, too far with all of the additions. But also it's rather fun to add bits and pieces to it. I'm trying to analyse how far, how much you can see. I'll, I'll swish it across every now and again so you can see a bit more of it. There you are. Okay. So this area, oh, I'm going to knock the granulation medium over. I'm just going to add a wee bit more water just to get it to move. Literally, I'm touching the paper with the tip of my brush, which then releases some of the fluid that I've picked up from my water pot and allow it to meander. I have a bit more the green gold over there actually on the opposite side otherwise it's going to be a bit a bit lonely over there and a little bit of the cobalt violet as well it's a fantastic color this cobalt violet sadly it's not cheap mind you art materials aren't really are they okay and i've got something there there's a blob if ever you get a hair or a blob into your wet painting, just leave it. Um, if you go in now, what you'll do is create the paint to sort of disperse, creating a background. If you leave it till it's dry, it'll just then flick off, so that'll be fine. So I'm going to leave it. Right, um, Miss Grimm, I've hidden it from myself, it's under here, there we are. So I'm gonna lay some of this into the wet paint. Not much here, I don't think, there's more about here. If I could pull it apart. <laughs> live TV as such isn't it or live painting live demo so just to kind of pop that in you do have to literally sort of press it down um, and it's like cling film you can manipulate it and I can even put some more paint on here which I'm going to do I think I'm just going to have a little bit more going on here the trouble is I'll have to be patient or get the hairdryer and when you get the hairdryer out um, this will all go flying all over the place and um, you won't be able to hear me Yay, they say. <laughs> right, and weird stuff. It goes everywhere. You'll find it, should you, you manage to get yourself some, you'll find it all over your, your studio, your house, wherever you're painting. It just seems to hang on to you. Right, that, those bits, I'm going to just place into there. I mean, as I say, you're putting your fingers into the painting, but I'm okay with that. I've got my towel. I can, I can clean up. <laughs> It feels a little bit, I've got some scissors, it feels like it needs a little bit up here. So I'm screwing up a little corner and I'm going to pop this in there. You nearly got my fingerprints. <laughs> so I get the other brush with the paint and uh, reinstate some colour. There, and I'll leave that on there. That's possibly too wet, but never mind. And I'm going to put some more green in here. So hopefully you can see that where it's, this funny stuff is like sucking up the um, paint, we'll get some weird marks. There's one that's gone up into the sky, so that's no good. 
and that can't go there and we'll just encourage it to go there um, with my fingerprints again <laughs> right I will for the sake of the demonstration um, put the hairdryer on um, so talk amongst yourselves and what's Sandra saying where do you get the script yes yeah, a really good question Sandra <laughs> um, I think it's more to do with um, crafts and maybe sewing than it is to do with painting um, so it might be worth um, putting that into a, a Google search or something. Yeah, I'm sorry, I really don't know, because it was given to me by a friend many years ago, and she does a lot of crafts, or did at that point. Um, so, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to just take my headphones out a moment, and I'm going to put the hairdryer on, try and dry this to... Um, I love that real white there, isn't that gorgeous? Um, and then I'm going to be able to go on a bit. I'm saying that, I'm just going to lift a little bit more out. So I'm using a damp, clean brush just to ensure that that path kind of goes up there a little bit more. Could use a bit of tissue, just lift. Would you press down firmly? There we go, that's it. I might have another one of those there. Actually, that's what I wanted to say to you. I've reminded myself, woohoo, that the colours that I'm using, if they granulate, there's every chance they're going to lift. And what's really lovely when you're um, painting to make your painting just a little bit more interesting is actually to lift out what by lifting out you make it you know you add interest to it rather than just um, leaving it as is you can see I'm lifting out some lighter areas beware you get carried away it's just the way it is you know you're enjoying yourself so there you go <laughs> right hair dryer on so I'll talk to you in a moment somebody's just said something wood cling film yeah absolutely Pam yeah cling film works just as well and Claire has said is it graphite an actual paint color yes it's um I'm very good at hiding things they're literally under my nose but I hide things from myself wherever I put it oh here we are put my palette on it it's a schminke color um I will photograph this or I've taken a photograph with the colors that I um have trialed and well this thing this little scrap of paper and the paints are all there and I'll drop those in at the end so you've, you've got them you can refer to them but yeah it's oh it's a super color and when I do my bees which I haven't done in ages um, I quite often use that color as well um, in the bees because it just makes them more interesting right just gonna unattach myself I'll be back Well, there, the painting isn't dry, but you can now see, hopefully, um, that the marks that this scrim, whatever it is, has um, actually made. It's a little bit more interesting, I think. Um, I love that bit. It wasn't really intentional, but that's <laughs> it's just meandering. And these are very delicate. I mean, you can use... Um, let me find my... my... rigger. Um, I also like using a rigger that's when the painting gets to a, a point where it's matte wet, not totally wet. Let me get that bit off now. Um, and you can create back runs. So just a damp brush, not sopping wet. It, now I've dried it, it probably won't work. But if I just try, if I do a couple of marks here. No, it doesn't want to work because I've dried it too much. That's just typical. Eat your words, girl. <laughs> 
I'm just going to soften some of these edges. I can't show you, unfortunately, but um, basically I would use a brush to sort of um, lift out, to creating that um, a back run, which is lovely. Now this bit I'm not happy with. Now this scrim stuff's gone everywhere and into my paints and my water and I diddly I. So this bit not happy with, so I'm going to just pop a bit of water over there. It's one of me about being able to lift. It's really great. Be careful you don't... Um, take it into the white area this is very white paper I normally work on traditional white but this is quite white and sometimes that's rather lovely right I didn't want it to be going over the imaginary road <laughs> and there we are that's fine that'll do by the time I go dark either side of that that will um that will have disappeared a bit right so I'm loving these colors they're working quite well aren't they um I have another question Nope, that's it. All done. Right here. So, where to go next? And bearing in mind, I want to keep it fairly simplistic. So, I'm going to go with some more sort of um, contemporary marks. I want it to look much more like. Um, well, this is looking like a bramble. I could, I could mess with this. I could have so much fun with this. I'm picking up some cobalt violet, and I'm going to go into the here and just add a few more marks in here, rather than it just all being dark. So this, this could be. Um, hedgerow or something right on the edge it was initially meant to be a, a stone wall but you know the painting informs you after all doesn't it you, know, you have to go literally with the flow so I'm just I'm, a, I'm ahead of myself I'm doing little marks and I shouldn't be all right that's enough of that just blend that bit away there it, you know you have to like check yourself don't you so if you're moving in um, a different direction far too quickly just uh recognize it and move away I think this could be some hedges or something um, when I do a bit more over here to lead us in that's quite a nice idea lovely right so I'm going to go into um, hello June how nice to have your company so I'm going to pick up some of the cobalt uh, this palette I want the cobalt violet light with the green and um it's making me think about COVID, isn't it? You know, all classes that I run locally have had to come to an end, and it's so nice to see people joining me here because it's um, still nice to to take part in your art, isn't it? And have some fun with paint. Right, so I'm rolling. I'm back to it. Rolling, rolling. <laughs> I won't sing anymore. Rolling the brush because I want a little bit more of that green here and on the edges. Why not sing? Hmm. <laughs> Because I can't sing very well, that's why. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to create uh, you know, that 3D, the depth of colour. It needs a bit of something here, so I'm just rolling that pigment. Just trying to be as expressive as possible. The moorland is like this, isn't it? It's just like full of movement and twists and turns, as it were. There's one patch that I particularly love it's um, near um, I believe it's called Bone Hill and then there are tours up behind and there's you go up this sort of lovely stone you know track and um, oh, the hawthorns are out and it's just beautiful very very inspiring and I was supposed to be doing some sketching on Dartmoor course basically earlier part of the suite well the weather had a different idea didn't it so that's better now. I hope you can see that. Oh, you couldn't see that. So I've made that less white to get that sort of le oops, lead in. So I'm chucking my um, granulation medium on the floor. So I'm going to take that all the way up just so that it's not quite so stark white. I, I don't want to lose too much of that white now, but it does need to be knocked back a little bit. And I'm going to pick up some of that violet. And it's incredible what you can achieve with just three colours. I think that's just the glory of any sort of medium that you use that you know you can just keep having fun. I'm gonna put some of this colour over here because that's very dark. Right. I'm gonna move some of these marks because they're looking rather sort of heavy. So I'm just Again, tickling the edge. So I've got my brush. I've actually almost flattened it out. Oh, nice clean hand. Flattened it down a bit. And I am go to the side. So I've just... Can I... If I hold that up. So I've gone to the side of this mark here that I want to soften. And then I touch it. 
just a little bit so that the that pigment has got somewhere to go that I'm trying to soften so just touch that and then that bit and you can be quite judicial about where your marking marks are going and how you're moving it around and it's just softening softening these marks a little bit okay hopefully you can see that and I think it's time to do a bit more cleaning in it's always a good idea just to keep those edges clean so you've got a good idea of what you're achieving. This is a real lovely tangle of stuff here. Does it ever worry you that other people don't see what you see on or what you're... No, <laughs> not at all. I had to think about that for a second, Sandra. No, um, the thing is, it's like everything. We, we all see different things in, in um, an image or, you know, our interpretation of something. So no, not at all. Um, somebody would look at that and think, well, it doesn't look anything like that, you know. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, we're all very different. I'm just adding a bit more dark because it seemed to, that dark was just stopping there, wasn't it? So I'm going to spread it out just a little bit. Um, I can see me spattering there later, but I kind of want to go there now. So shall we try it? Now, I think um, that is the beauty of art, isn't it? That it's just, you can do whatever you like. I'm back to Bob Ross, it's your world. <laughs> and that's fine. Um, because what attracts you in a painting, in a scene, shall we say, won't necessarily attract somebody else. Um, you know, and I, I really advocate this which I'm about to spout forth about, is that when you, if you do some sketching outside um, or painting, whatever way around you do it, um, whatever your process is, I would literally spend, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes longer, even if I had the time when it was conditions permitted you, just absorbing the scene. As it's so easy just to think, oh, well, I'm going to crack on and paint, I've got limited time and all that sort of thing. But if you give yourself time, just to absorb what you see um, and even some people feel a bit weird about this but even close your eyes and listen um, and before you actually do start painting your work would be so different really really different oh I ought to be showing what I'm doing I'm, I'm yapping and not telling you right I've <laughs> um, let, I, let me just go back to this point I'm telling you at the moment it's um, if you were to do, let's backtrack, if you arrive on a scene that you want to, that inspires you, you love it, you want to um, paint it or a version of it um, and you crack on and do that. Okay, fine, do that. That's great. What I would then strongly suggest you do is then do that business of sitting still and absorbing and then close your eyes. And as soon as you close your eyes, do another version of it. And I'll bet you it's a billion times different to what you've just produced Um It'll be so different, I can't express this enough, that, um, and it's because, because it comes more from within what you've been feeling rather than what you've been seeing. That's the end of my lecture. <laughs> right, this is very probably um, not dry enough. Bear in mind I've used colours that do uh, lift, but I've got a soft sable and I'm going to just dampen this I'm very, very lightly as I want to create some movement and over here so I'm just very gently and it's a bit hit and miss I'm not dampening all of it you can't actually see that I'm afraid um, no not even if I move the pad around you I don't think you can see that and what I've done is I've mixed all three colors so that I've got a, a sort of dark and what I want to do is have for the distance I want to have more cobalt violet in there so that it's a cooler colour. That's quite thick, so I don't want it quite that thick. And I've moved to a flat nylon brush. Yeah, that's quite quite generous. So I just find where I would put those marks and I'm going to just drop some pigment. So hopefully you can see this. I'm just going see that white lighter mark there. I want to make sure that is dry. I'm getting a trusty bit of tissue. I want to keep that dry. So just very carefully pull that through there. Lovely. I think I've just put marks on my sky. Always generous. Right, and above that, I'm just going to touch. Can you see that? Just touch, and then I'm going to use the other side, of, just the corner of my brush to get a different shape. Maybe a bigger one. So that I'm starting to create 
the sense that there's distant trees along that ridge. There's a little bit there that's come underneath and I don't want that, so that's going to go. Just lift that out gently with a bit of tissue. Um, and I may go a bit thicker, actually. It's looking a bit paler than one, so let me go again. And I'm going to take that right to that edge. You can see where I've stopped with my um, damp mark, so I'm just going to go slightly above and get them to move up a little bit more. So the process slows down and you become more considerate in your mark making um, once you've kind of made those first bold marks. Um, I hope you can see this. Can, can you see this? Everybody all right? If anybody's familiar with Zoom, I'd love to do a Zoom thing so you can talk back to me and say, don't do that. Or, oh, that's nice. Or what the heck? <laughs> Anything would be so nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> to have some feedback. Well, I'm going to take a lot of that pigment off the brush now by dampening it, or dampening, dabbing it onto my tissue because I want to have those marks much less pronounced as such and just um, almost all of it off now and create some very faint marks. And then I'm going to get the rigger, this one, and I have some bits. So I'm creating fields if you like, distant fields, different hills or whatever in the background. I'm dampening that again because I need some more of those marks over here. The imagination is a marvellous thing, isn't it? <laughs> I want somebody to say yes! <laughs> Am I really on my own here? Okay, Zoom is fairly easy to set up with an app. Yes, I've got I've got um, that facility, um, Pam. Yeah, I yeah I can do it. So it's just maybe I'll put that a shout out and a link to it so that um, anybody who wants to join me another time can. We'll do it. Um, do a one by Zoom via Zoom even. In fact, I had a meeting earlier. I'm doing a course with a lady. Nothing to do with art. Well, sort of <laughs> mindset stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, that was all via Zoom. Oh, I think I've talked to you about Georgina before now. She's a, the mindset coach. Totally recommend her and her work. I've moved so far in my sort of understanding of myself, shall we say. Go soften that one. That was a bit... Can you see that one? Yeah. What's it looking like, folks? Rubbish. <laughs> It's all right, I amuse myself, it's okay. I'm adding more black. I should say, I should show you this, I beg your pardon. Look, I'm adding more black to this. So I'm going to the side of that well, pick up a little bit more of the cobalt violet, add that as well, and then some of this. And then I'm going to, because these, the reason being, as I'm coming down to, the, to this, <laughs> thank you, Sandra, bless your cottons. <laughs> um, I want to add some more depth to here having not um, dampened my area that I want to have some wriggling my brush around so I want to have some trees or suggestion of trees I'm softening some of these edges as well to um, thank you Pam <laughs> and Libby thank you <laughs> thank you now I don't feel like I'm talking to myself and losing the plot which I often do feel is the case <laughs> there we are I don't like that one either, so I'm going to just, you know, you keep looking back at what you've created and think, oh, that's a weird mark. It doesn't even look like tree, so that's got to go. I'm going to, this is, I've got dark on my brush. I am going to just pop a little bit in there. Ooh, gosh, that's quite dark, isn't it? But I'll go back to it. Right, so I dampened here. That's probably dried now. As long as the surface is damp, you're all right. <laughs> and I need to come, I'll come to that in a minute. Right. This could actually now be the wrong brush to use because it's so flat that it will uh, really quite um, create the same marks. You know, it's, uh, at least with your sable, you've got round that you've got a chance of creating slightly different shapes by the different movements of your, of your brush, the way you hold it. Oh, 
I really love these colours. I haven't used cobalt violet in ages. I'm not sure why. I think you go through phases, don't you? That you just, um, it's not that I fall out of love with it. I completely forget it or I can't find it, which is probably more like it. So I'm just going back to that heavy mark that I put there, but that's okay. That's, no, that's looking all right. If I hold that up to you a bit, I love the sense that this is getting, that's kind of going off into the distance. Well, it is in my world. Let me go this way a bit more. Over here. If you fancy having a go at doing this, you'd be able to um, pause the, the video um, as and when, couldn't you? That would be quite useful. You know, maybe use your own colours if you don't like these. I think um, the heather is pretty much done on Dartmoor. There's uh, an up at the New Forest, etc. I think it's kind of going over. But I, th I also think it's had an impact on, on why I've chosen Cobalt Violet, actually. Um, I was up there the other day. Oh, I went up to do some sketching and, and get Neil to film. Well, I did take some photographs and film. Um, in fact, I put one on. I did show one, didn't I? And, uh, oh my goodness, it got rained off. In fact, where was it? So right here. I got a sketch that I did that I really loved when I was on Dartmoor. It was great. And then I left it under a rock whilst we carried on on, on our walk. And um, very trusting, wasn't it, of me? And... Um, the rain got to it, so it's like, <laughs> like a whiteout. Oh well, that's what you get for leaving it on the moor. I'm going to leave that for now, because I'm not sure if that's enough, but I, I'm just going to step away from that for the moment. I feel I might, mm, saying that, look, you see, tickle underneath and allow some of that pigment to come beneath. Yeah, I can't sit, do what I say I'm going to do, can I look? <laughs> just, yeah, that's better. And well, that's more, more like it, I think. I like, see, I don't even see that bit. See this little white area here. I really would like to accentuate that as, as a, a field or a hedge line or something. But if I go in at the moment, because it's so wet, it um, I'll just ruin it. So step away. And that one's looking particularly weird. So I'm going to alter that. We had shenanigans here this morning. I'll share this little anecdote with you um we, our cat who funny enough is a bit poorly at the minute um, and we don't really know what is wrong with him he's been to the vet but um i'm just by the way i'm just adding a bit of dark here with uh, meant to be a bit more cobalt violet in here and um, it just felt like it needed it it's, uh, that's the thing it's all about a feel isn't it and some i'm going to put some here as well just get balance just felt it needed it so back to cat um yeah just get this hoo-ha and my hubby's shouting quick get him get him um, he'd only caught a squirrel and brought it down to the house. Blooming blighter. We love watching him when he's going to scare them all away. <laughs> I have deliberately left that pigment there. Can you see that bit yeah, there? Um, because I want it to settle into the fibres of the paper before I go back and do the softening. I've just cleaned my brush ready and I've flattened it a little bit on the end. And I'm going to do that softening business. Let's come underneath. I don't want to lose too many of these marks that that funny scrim stuff has made because I quite like what it's done. But I can also then just dab out a couple of those marks. It's all a bit of a suggestion. That's interesting, that mark there. I have to do something with that later. Right, how are we doing? That's shouting as being very dark. So, let's find the soft sable it just where this is all soft warm and um green and gold and what have you that just looks very very dark well i put it there didn't i so i'm going to take it out so i'm just very gently dabbing it with a sable brush to lift and then i'm going to lift out that dark yeah it didn't read right being there which is weird okay there we go and then go back in with more of the warmer sort of colour and knock that back. And some of the, oopsie, cobalt light, uh, cobalt light, cobalt violet. That's my other favourite colours, cobalt turquoise light. Absolutely love it, but it's not in this painting. Okay, so decision time. We're here. Um, if I kind of move it slightly across so you can see. So it's now... 
what do I do with this area? Do I go back to plan A, which was that it was going to be um, a, a sort of rocky, well, granite rock kind of leading up to the uh, path? Or do I create more hedgerows? Interesting. What's your vote, folks? Whilst you're analysing and going to hopefully give me some suggestions, I'm going to go back in here. This needs more, so this is going to be interesting. I'm going to put more of this sort of colour, maybe a bit warmer here, because that's kind of looking a bit lonely. Very carefully and lightly adding my damp brush. Then I'm going to go back to this one, which is the green gold with the cobalt violet. A bit more green gold, I think. And a little bit of the um, graphite. Maybe more of the violet. It's the beauty of having it on the side of the palette. You can just keep dipping into it. It's really quite useful. Right, hopefully that's not dry too much. And now I'm going to put some more marks. I just feel it needs a little bit more here, maybe stronger as well. More concentrated. Oh, that's better. That looks like it belongs there now. <laughs> Almost creating a hedge, I suppose. Vary the colour. I'm just adding a little bit more of the graphite. And blend it all along. It's a powerful colour, isn't it? It really is strong. You see how I'm spattering? This is dry enough for me to dab, it's okay. And I'm going to blend those two there. I think I'll have some, I don't know, sort of like trees or something, hawthorns or something going up there, very spindly ones. Get this to disappear a little bit. <clears throat> Did anybody fall asleep? Using the tip of my brush now just to release some pigment. That way I'm going to have some very um, spindly, weird sort of hedgerows, bushes. I mean, on this again, if this is dark or wherever you want it to be, um, they are kind of a little bit more raggedy, aren't they? The, Hawthorns, I'm thinking of, they will lean across in a certain way. Now, when that's dry, I think I'm going to take something up there and here. So, I'm going to get my flat brush, that nylon, and sort this out a little bit. Very lightly picking up the edge of that pigment. Don't like that light there, that's no good. Yeah, I said I was going to be at an hour. Gosh, the time is trotting, trotting on, isn't it? So um, nearly that already. That's too strong. Don't like that. So I'm going to take the colour off my brush and lift that out. This is the thing about never worry too much. Just adjust. Right, I'm going to take the hairdryer to it again because I want to be able to do some detailed um, trees I say detailed, it's as detailed as I do, so I will be a little bit noisy for a moment, so sorry about this, folks. I'm going to mix a bit of a puddle 
of the complete mixture, the all three. So that's the green gold, cobalt violet, quite a bit of that. I want it to have quite a strong, you know, depth of colour. And then some of the graphite in there. Maybe a bit more. There we go. Okay. And the reason for this is what I want to do is go back to this area and I'm going to load my rigger and plant a tree here. So what I do is I pile the pigment on to a section. Oh, look at this. Blobs galore. Something you could do, and I never remember to do, well, smudge even more, <laughs> is to put a piece of tissue right across your um, sky. That will prevent you from doing what I've just done and spattering on it. <laughs> I'm just trying to lift that out a little bit. More or less gone. Okay, if I do that now, so practice what you preach. No more spatters. Okay, so I've got this puddle of colour here and I just want to do some sort of twiggy kind of small trees or, you know, you get those fabulous um, hawthorn trees, don't you? So and if I draw it with this, in fact, so I'll hold it this way. And I don't normally do this sort of thing. Anybody who knows me well would attest to this. I don't normally draw particularly. Can I get some of that darker colour in here? Just literally onto there so that it'll show up more. It's like a um, witch's hollow type of thing. Really gnarly old trees. They're fabulous. And if you look at them when you're on them all, they, they are so twisted. Do you know, I've never yet been to Wisman's Wood. It's supposed to be a fabulous thing on Dartmoor and I've never been. I need to remedy that. Let's see, a bit more fluid required. I might need to raise that so I can see where I'm going with my... And they're, they're, they're always going one way or another. Um, and this one's going this way. <laughs> I have decided. So it will be so. And you literally can do whatever you like as regards marks because that's what they look like. I think the more twisted and gnarled... And I'm holding my, my rigger further back, I expect you can see that, further up the handle, which is actually giving me the chance to make more weird sort of shapes. The one thing I would say is I do tend to notice I end up making the same sort of mark. So I, like that, I've just gone, <laughs> I seem to do a circle every now and again. And that, you just have to be mindful of that, that you, you know, don't keep repeating the same marks. Very easy to do. Nice if I had a photograph, that would have been useful, wouldn't it, to work on of a old tree. Maybe I'll add to that later. I'm going to have something coming off the side as well. I'm going to soften some of the edges because they sometimes have some leaves still on them, don't they? The winter trees. And you could use pen and ink on that one if you wanted to really add to it. What does that look like within there? Eh, it's all right. Are you all there or have you all gone? Have I run out of time or anything? You all disappeared. <laughs> Anybody there? Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. It's beginning to wonder it just had gone so quiet. <laughs> You've all gone off to make tea. <laughs> uh, mine's green tea, no sugar. 
no sugar you wouldn't have sugar in t green tea anyway would you right now i'm going to start going into uh, stronger marks i'm not going to use this as as um brambles or anything i think it might look a bit too um i don't know i want to say twee and i don't know if i even mean that but a bit sort of yeah not quite right anyway so i'm going to now do some marks with my little bit of wax crayon because what i want to do is try and suggest that there are some stone walls here and i'm going to go over it with some stronger pigment what you've got to do is be very careful that you don't overdo it because you can't see the kind of marks that you're making now um so yeah don't overdo it so i'm going to use this brush and i go quite strong And I'm going to paint over these and see what happens. I will be moving some of this pigment around in a minute, but I just want to see where I've put the wax crown. There you can see some marks starting to show. And I'll move that around in a second. Just going to soften and lift some of these marks out. As I say, this is... In my mind, it's a stone wall, granite stone wall. So lift out as much as you want. Like here, you can just press in. If you hold your tissue in a irregular shape, squish it down and then press into it. Then you get, see how you get these marks that just are quite interesting. And it allows you to be a bit more free in your mark making, which I think is glorious. Soften some of these marks, but I also want to have a suggestion that there's some stone wall up there as well. I'll put a little bit more of the violet on it as it's sort of moving away, and then I'm going to blend that with my finger. Using my finger to make a stamp. Oh, I quite like that bit now. Can you see that? I'll let me put it over there a bit more. Yeah, just about. And clear that edge. I went quiet then, I'm thinking. The rigor's coming out now. So this is when I feel like I end up doing some drawing, but that's okay, I don't mind that at all. So by doing some drawing, I, I like to have these sort of marks that are drawn. And this is just a combination of all of the colors dab that one out in a minute and I'm going to show you right at the end another little technique that I think is fabulous because it um, allows you to really manipulate everything that you've done basically it's, it's washing it out but uh, hence the towel as well it's a really fascinating process you've gone to all this trouble of painting and then you wash off a lot of it and it, I think it's just brilliant The further away you go, the less defined you want this sort of wall to be. Um, I think it needs, I think here, because this is so dark over this side, so pronounced, um, I think this could do with a little bit of extra help over here. So I'm going to just put, um, I'm going to squiggle with my rigger just to get a little bit more interest up here and then go in and soften it. Remember that you can lift out as much as you put in, so I'll just do that as well. Actually, I've got a gap. I want that being there as well. There we are. I'm saying I want them to be smaller, and I painted large pieces, so or sections. Found this 
very cheap paper somewhere, a pack of three, which is brilliant. Um, I've been using stuff that's very embossed, and oh my goodness, it's... <laughs> No, I didn't really mean to put that stamp in there, you know, and all that sort of thing, <laughs> once you're dabbing things out. It's interesting that you have to be very careful about the type of tissue you use to dab your paintings out with. Mad. Not keen on that area, so lifting that little bit out. And again, never worry, just do what you need to do. It's fine. Like here, if I get this brush... This is my saver, and I've cleaned it as best I can with filthy water. I mean, look at the colour of my water, honestly. It's, uh, mm, it's dirty. <laughs> but this area I don't like, so I'm going to lift just a little bit out here and there, maybe a bit there, and so on. So, wriggling my brush around a bit. That's better, but I'm going to soften the bottom of it as well. There we are. Less defined. Okay, I'm going to just dry this again because I want to, when I've dried it, I can then show you this lifting out business that I'm talking about by wetting it. Um, and in order to make that tree look anything more like a hawthorn tree, I'm going to have to get a photograph. So that's probably going to stay as it is. It'll grow more, but later. <laughs> oh, and that bit's too dark. Okay, oh, I could have left that till another minute. Right, just going to dry this again. So I'm afraid I will be noisy. We're into the final furlong, folks. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Caroline. Caroline, even, sorry. <laughs> Hello, Sally. <laughs> Sneaky peek at who's with me. <laughs> Oopsie. Sending everything flying. Right, so in order to do this next bit, I'm not sure about this this side. I might end up doing a bit with something something to that in a minute. I'm not sure. I say it's a it's all to play for at the moment. Right, so I've gone to the trouble of drying this only to wet it. So out comes the the big um what's it called hake. I'm just getting some clean water. And I'm going to wash this away, which <laughs> does seem crazy, but I, I, it'll be fun. So I'm just going to dampen that slightly. And allow some of those colours to literally run out. And it, it leaves sort of a history, I feel. Oops, it got tangled up with the headphones. Get off. <laughs> Still not sure about that dark bit there. Yep, just leaves a bit of a history. And I'm going to take those across the page, those brush marks, because it is very white and um, allow that all to meander. Clean up around the edges. I might have taken out more of the stones that I wanted to, but I can also adjust that now. By lifting out with the tissue again so you lift out some different shapes or add them back in and I think the final thing we'll do some fairly dark marks and I'm holding my brush right at the very end and I just do some sort of, sort of squiggly kind of directional marks. I would have done that with a, a spatter but it's quite wet so just do a few more here. And then 
and if there's too many, that's all right, you can just soften a few. And if I want to add any more dark marks, I can. Just loading my brush. I might just put a little bit here and there. So that they are, they're just softer rather than being really strong, heavy marks. And I'm not sure what to do on the left hand side. Does anybody got any suggestions? Did anybody come up with anything? What do you reckon? Should I go dark over there as well? Should I? It feels imbalanced, so I'm going to have to do something here. <laughs> hmm. Cleaning my brush. I don't want it to become too dark and moody a, a painting, but at the same time, it needed some balance. Um, and as I've dried it, the pigment should have settled enough for you to kind of add and then remove should you wish. So I'm just adding some in there, here and there. And I think, do you know what I'm going to do? Oh, it's exciting. I am going to, I'm just going to soften that edge a minute, get my colour pencils. I just love using watercolour pencils in my artwork um, when I find them, <laughs> which is just here. I have a, a tin full and I could so add to it. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful colours. I could do it, a, put it on a purple. Would a purple work or is it going to be that pinky colour? I think it's this one. It's more like a lizard and crimson. I dunk it into the water, just the end, and then you could do some drawn marks, which are... I oh, just love it. <laughs> so it's a bit like the pencil marks I was doing earlier, but um, different colours. This one doesn't work quite so well. It's, I think it's a Smith's one. Yeah, W.H. Smith's. But um, the best ones are these Faber-Castell. And I just don't have a colour that would work so well. I don't think. I've got green. Do I have one that works with that? Oh, no, it's not. No. Ah, have to go buy some more. How awful. <laughs> I do. I like these. And I think when you get to a point where you feel like, oh, I'm fiddling, you know, you really are. So do stop. I haven't actually hit that mark yet. I just feel like I'm adding bits at the minute, so that's that's okay. And I'll keep doing it. Doing it until I stop. Then you know you've gone too far. I've gone off here, look, so be careful. Actually, I'm going to leave that. That's okay. Then I've got the Faber-Castell green one, and I'll just do a few marks with that, and then I will stop. <laughs> Honest. Because <laughs> it's like throwing the kitchen sink at it, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think that's not the right colour. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. So, can you see that? It's a bit wet still, but... So that's the painting as it is. I'm, I am going to adjust the tree. I will put a photograph of said tree when adjusted, but that's that's it. So... Any questions? Oh, thank you. Whoever sent me, I love her. Thank you. Um, any questions? Anybody want to say anything? And I'm going to now take you out of this clamp and I'm going to turn you around and I can talk to you. But I will have my reading glasses on, so, yeah. Well, hello. <laughs> um, I've enjoyed doing that. And it's, as I say, this is all about um, Mental Health, World Health Day or whatever it is. World Mental Health Day. I'll get the words out. I just think whether that turned out to be something that I thought was just wonderful or not is completely i'm looking in the right place now completely and utterly irrelevant what's important is that the act of creating i think that and being out in nature is one of, for me and i'm sure it is for a lot of people the, one of the most wonderful things in the world so i do hope you've enjoyed it has anybody got anything to say um it's it's not paper uh, libby it's um yeah, Saunders Waterford. Look, I have one. Let me just see if I can swing around and get a hue off. See if I hold this up. It might be back to front when I show you that to you. It's Saunders, yeah, Saunders Waterford knot, and they're they're gummed around the edges, um, and it's brilliant because it's it means you don't have to. I'll take, dropped it on the floor. You don't have to stretch the paper, so that's just brilliant. I, it's so easy. Um, 
yeah and I like working on it and it really is forgiving it allows you to keep going in and going in and going in <laughs> especially if you work uh, wet into wet like I do a lot um okay thank you Claire I love those colours. I mean, the green gold, Daniel Smith's green gold is just, mwah. <laughs> I wouldn't be without it. But the same with um, the cobalt, well, I'm get my seat, cobalt violet, which is a, a, a super colour, and the fact that it granulates, that's really lovely. Cobalt violet with um, uh, 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 sepia ink and granulation medium. Oh my goodness, it's glorious. So, yeah, that's nice. Uh, oh, you're very welcome, Sue. Nice to have your company. Yeah, when, when you've got time. I mean, this is, we've just got to find time, haven't we? So, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> Any other? Thank you, Sandra. Is that it? Oh, well, if... um, You're welcome, Libby. <laughs> I am filthy. Look, I'm just... this one, well, not that filthy, but filthy. Yeah, I think it might be time for a cup of tea now, isn't it? And um, I'm actually going out later and I'm going sketching, so that'll be nice. Do you know, I don't know, with the, do I look up there or am I looking at me? I, feel like, I think if I look up there, then I'm looking at you, otherwise I'm looking down there. <laughs> anyway, right, folks, enough of me, I'm off. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, sharing my passion and my joy and um, a bit of madness. <laughs> See you all soon. I will be trying to get into the group much more regularly than I have. I mean, life's been an interesting journey. Still is, isn't it? But um, anyway, I will see more of you. So bye for now. Bye.